Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that we're going to look into today is the suggested case of Sarah Ann Wood. And really there isn't that much information on this case. I've tried to gather as much as I could for you guys. Once more, this was a suggested case by Zoom. So thank you for that. I appreciate any suggestions you guys have. I'd just like to let you know, I mean, no disrespect to anyone I'm going to talk about today. I've just gathered the information off the internet and compiled it into a video for educational purposes. Sarah M. Woods was born on the 4th of March in 1981. She was born in Frankfurt, New York to her parents, Robert and Francis Wood. She also had a brother called Dusty and a sister called Nikki. And Sarah was a lovely little girl. She loved to dance. She loved to read poetry and she had a very strong faith. Now, Sarah was just 12 years old when she went missing from Litchfield in Tagua County. It was a Wednesday, the 18th of August in 1993. When Sarah was last seen, she was on a bicycle after she was coming home from Norwich Corner Church on Roberts Road in Sackowit. That was actually where she went to a summer Bible group. That was actually where she went to a summer Bible school. And she was actually traveling back home on Hadcombe Street. She was riding a bike home when she actually went missing. So the day she went missing, she was last seen wearing this pink t-shirt that had guess who embroidered on the front. She was wearing these turquoise blue shorts and brown sandals. And she was actually traveling with a poster board, a church songbook, and eight by 10 transparencies or slides as they are otherwise known as. And they're these thin pieces of material like see-through material that you can draw on and you put in overhead projectors and obviously it projects it onto the wall. It was actually found out that later on that she did actually manage to travel safely down Roberts Road. And she was last seen going up this steep hill on Hadcam Road. She was literally four tenths of a mile away from home, but she would never make it home. She was never heard of or seen of again. So after Sarah didn't come home, her parents obviously got really worried. They called the police. Her pink and white 10 speed mountain bike was later found kind of propped up against a tree around several hundred feet away from the road. They would also find the things that she was carrying, the poster board and the transparencies that she was carrying with her scattered in the brush area and they thought she'd been abducted. They put out an extensive search for Sarah, but unfortunately they didn't find anything. And that was until a man confessed to her murder. Louis Lent was a 45 year old janitor from Massachusetts and he did actually confess to Sarah's murder. And it does still remain a question to many as to whether he actually did kill Sarah or not. He was initially brought into the authorities on the 7th of January in 1994 after he had tried to kidnap a 12 year old girl called Rebecca Savas. It was a Friday morning in Pittsfield, Massachusetts when Lewis threatened Rebecca with a gun. He was basically trying to get her up in a pickup truck that he had borrowed from a friend. But Rebecca, fate having like trouble breathing and it kind of threw him off a little bit. It allowed her enough time to make a run for it. She ran and he actually grabbed a backpack but she did manage to wriggle out of this backpack. And that was when another man came out and he obviously was there to help. So Lewis jumped in the pickup and he drove off. But Rebecca had seen his face. The authorities arrested Lewis a little later on whilst he was eating a sandwich at a friend's house. They found the truck with a loaded gun inside and Rebecca's backpack. During his arrest, they conducted a three day interrogation and that was when he actually confessed to killing Sarah. He confessed to killing two children. Now, Lewis did claim that he had these blackouts, which was caused when in 1974, he had an encounter with aliens. And then after these blackouts, he went round murdering children. Well, obviously this was used to try and get an insanity plea. And his lawyers would go on to say that the police coerced him into a confession and that he was mentally unstable. So Lewis actually confessed to killing Jimmy Bernardo, who was a 12 year old boy that actually went missing on the 22nd of October in 1990. He also, as I said before, confessed to killing Sarah Ann Wood. According to his confession, he came across Sarah whilst he was driving his van along the back road with the intent of finding a child to abuse. 
and then murder. He took out his hunting knife to force her into his car, where he then used tape to bind her hands. He then drove her upstate to Adendak Mountains, where he proceeded to rape her. He then actually took a heavy tree branch and actually clubbed her to death. He had actually brought tools with him to bury a body because, like I said, he was looking for a child to abuse and murder, according to him. So he used these to bury a body. He actually did state I didn't check as to whether she was still alive because I don't like touching dead bodies. It was also said that he went on to draw a map of the area where he put Sarah's body, and this was near Racket Lake. He promised that they would find a body there, and the police went on to scour the area thoroughly. They actually performed two huge searches of this area. The first was in the dead of winter, so obviously the conditions were harsh, it was very cold, it was snowy, it, it was pretty difficult. But the second was after spring thaw, and her body was still not discovered. There's been so much speculation around the wrist, the police really did try and connect him with all these other child disappearances, and they even actually created a task force for this reason alone. But that was eventually disbanded in 1994. Despite this, they only could link him to Sarah because of his confession, and he had been branded this serial killer, but there was the possibility that he wasn't actually one. An episode of 48 Hours actually went on to profile Lewis Lent. It said that in the months before his arrest, he was acting very strange. He started wearing these dark sunglasses and his work quality went downhill so much so that he was fired. Two days before the failed attempt to kidnap Rebecca, he had built a false wall in his apartment, creating a space that was certainly large enough to keep a child a prisoner. And this was what the police claimed he was going to do. But also on the other hand, Lewis had apparently told a friend that he was building an aquarium. Now, if your friend comes into your house, sees that you're building a false wall and asks a question, then you, you're not going to say you're making a prison for a child. So obviously you're going to come up with some reason whether he was actually building an aquarium or whether he was building it for Rebecca. We just don't know. Lewis had a good reputation by his community. He was known as this kind, caring man. And police actually did note that during his interrogation, he wrote a letter of apology to Rebecca and he appeared disturbed or upset when he was talking about Jimmy Bernardo. On the 12th of January 1995, Lewis was char convicted of several charges, including things like kidnapping, assault with a dangerous weapon, battery. And Rebecca, like I said, she knew, she recognised her attacker. She went on to identify him in court and testify against him. In 1996, Lewis was charged with abducting Sarah, but he later recanted his statement. Regardless of that, Lewis was charged of murder and sentenced to 25 years to life. Lewis's mother outside court claimed that they had charged an innocent man and that he didn't speak out because he was terrorised and tortured in jail. Sarah's body has never been found and Lewis did actually state later on that her body wasn't actually where he said it was. He basically refused to give any details as to where her body may be because he states that he had actually buried another body close by and he didn't want anybody to find it. So that's why he will never let them find Sarah. Once more, he later recanted all of his statements. In 2013, Lewis Lent went on to confess to the 1992 murder of James Lusher, whose body has also never been found. Lent has actually never been charged in connection with Jamie's case, but witnesses actually placed Lewis in the area at the time of Jamie's disappearance. Sarah's case was reopened in 2015. So, looking into this case, there's kind of a few options. You either believe that Lewis Lent is this serial killer who murdered all of these children, including Sarah, the proof of which is very scarce. There are so many people out there who have actually committed murders that they haven't actually committed. And don't ask me why they would do that, because I don't know. Some people kind of would like the idea of having committed a murder, but I guess never actually could do it. So they may claim that they, they have committed this murder when they actually haven't. And some people are capable of doing things like that, have committed certain crimes, but would then hear of another case in, say, the media or something like that and would pretend that they had done it to add it to their list of crimes. Once more, I don't know why, but people do actually do it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Lewis Len is innocent, but he could very well have heard of Sarah's case in the public claimed that he had actually done it 
many people have done it before and I'm sure many more people will do it again. Regardless, I do hope that one day we do find out properly what happened to Sarah. If what Lewis said is the truth, then maybe hopefully one day we'll find a body and we can finally give her family the closure they deserve. If he didn't kidnap or murder her and she's maybe still out there, then I hope it comes to light. So whoever actually did this can serve the justice that they deserve. Sarah vanished at such a young age and it completely tore families apart. My heart really, really does go out to them. Videos like these are done to try and raise awareness. There are not many videos been done on Sarah Ann Wood, unfortunately. And I really do believe that all cases need to be shared. We still don't really know what happened to her. Lewis could be telling the truth, don't get me wrong. Or hopefully she's still out there. Maybe somebody has seen something that day who didn't realise. And videos like this could make you come forward. Or maybe somebody will find something up in that area. And this could give them an insight into, as to what it could be. It could be some crucial bit of evidence. Like I said, I don't know what happened to Sarah personally. There are so many conflicting things and there's so many people out there that don't actually believe Lewis killed Sarah. So if that's the case, where is she and what happened to her? What if she was kidnapped but wasn't ever murdered and she was taken into kind of one of them situations like JC Dugard where they keep them for so many years? Or maybe she was unfortunately killed. Maybe Lewis did do it and maybe her body is out there somewhere. I just hope that one day we will actually find out what happened to Sarah. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments below. Do you think that Lewis did this or do you think that he was kind of claiming that he did it but he actually didn't? If you guys have any more suggestions, please let me know and I'll look into them for you. Please like this video and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Sarah Ann Wood. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Bye.